when you get to a place like this, I don't know. I went through a lot of hard times during my life, but when you get to a place like this, it's like heaven. Got here, I, I thought I might want to go somewhere. I want to go. Stay right here. I keep walking these trails, and me and my dog, and I'm hoping one of these cars can tell me one tale, one story. But they do anyway. I think about them day in and day out. Walk the trail and early in the morning when the sun's first coming up, or when later at night when the sun's going down, a lot of people just don't understand the beauty of something like that, you know, how peaceful it really is. How much tranquility you can find in just a bunch of old junk cars. Or the trail you riding on, they just just something, something people really need to come and see. I do a little bit of everything around here. I paint, I just, I'm a, I'm kind of hands-on guy, and that's why I, when I got up here and met Dean, you know, he does the same thing I do. He, he's kind of creative. No, he's not creative. He's a nut. He, he's off the wall creative. And that's why we get along together. Uh, 1931, my mother and daddy bought 25, 30 acres here. They built that little store out here on the dirt road, no electricity. Gas, 19 cents a gallon, apples one cents each. He worked in the mines and did the store. A little small store, best we can scale it off, 19 or 24, and they lived in the back. Later on, they bought an old junk car or two, started selling parts and uh, making another dollar during depression time. And uh, so he got into the junk car parts business. Several years later, I came along. I grew up and was born in a junkyard. And uh, then later, when I graduated from high school, went off and got a job, saved some money, came back, got a loan, and bought about 4,000 more cars to add to their, what they had left. And we still got some of their cars out here. It's been sitting in the same place uh, 60 years, hadn't been moved. And that's where some of the uh, the flower pots, we call it, when the trees grows up through the windshield and the windows of the doors and goes on up. Flower pots. It's not a junkyard. It really is a 34-acre piece of art is what it is. For someone my grandfather's age, you know, um, not for many folks that are his age are capable of doing what he's doing. And I don't know how he keeps going, but... You know, it's really an encouragement because he, he just, he perseveres and regardless of how he feels, he'll be here Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday before 9 a.m. to make sure everything is ready to be open to the public. My name's Eddie McDaniel and they call me Fast Eddie up here. I'm a lifelong friend of Dean's. Grew up with him up here. Saw all these old cars get started with his dad. We used to play in them when we were kids, but we kind of go back a long way. I do a little entertainment for him up here. Sometimes I'm a night watcher. It's fabulous as far as antiques, antique cars, muscle cars, trucks, uh, from an A model to a <laughs> Studebaker. You'll find just about anything you ever thought about driving, or your grandparents drove, you'll find it up here. I think there's an accurate count now of around 4,400 cars uh, on this six miles of trails. 
I still got my my life to live, but and a lot of family, but I don't intend to leave here. I intend to stay right here. I'll deal with the rest of it on on time terms and the way I can deal with it, but I don't intend to leave here. If I can if I can leave this world right here. I hope that me and my dogs walking down some trail and whatever happens to me, I hope I can do it right here on this property. It's, it's like therapy. It just, I'm just happy here. I'm just happy here. It's where I want to be.